Hi, my name is Willan Ziada, New York City-based director and creator of theater, television, and film, and also a proud Phoenix Global Artist Ambassador. Today, I am thrilled to be speaking with a band member of the acclaimed band, Blonde Otter. He is drummer, Matt Falcone. For more on Matt and Blonde Otter, you could read more about all of them right below this video, but in the meantime, take a sneak peek at the amazing talents of the band, Blonde Otter. Thank you. How are you doing? I can't complain. Well, thank you for asking. How's your water doing? Uh, it's pretty good. I'm almost out of it, but <laughs> most of it was pretty good. I love it, Matt. Listen, I want to know a little bit about you. Um, where did you grow up and when did you realize that music was going to be a part of your life? Um, I grew up in Connecticut. Uh, I guess I realized music was going to be a part of my life after, well, I guess my brother bought a guitar or my parents bought a guitar for my brother and they were all playing in a band. And I remember feeling like I really wanted to be a part of that. So I guess it was kind of, um, and I guess it was like a feeling of being left out and then I didn't wanting to be involved. So uh, yeah, and then, I don't know, then certain, I guess, music groups um, definitely inspired me to, uh, I guess, just, you know, want to be around music. Like, Are there any groups in particular that inspired you, especially your drumming? Uh, yeah, uh, definitely Weezer, um, Pat mm -hmm. Wilson and Weezer. I remember feeling, um, you know, just just be like, I just really loved how his style and he had a lot of personality. Um, I was a big Beach Boys. I am a big Beach Boys fan. Um, Dennis Wilson, I always thought was really cool. And then even when he wasn't recording with the Beach Boys, I loved that big band sound. Um, two probably pretty big influences on me personally. Um, yeah, I would say those are probably the two biggest. That's amazing. Well, listen, even though I'm a Broadway director now. I was a performer for 25 years, and when I headlined Carnegie Hall a few years ago with my twin brother, my favorite instrument in the whole 90-piece New York Pops Orchestra has and will always be the drummer. I just love that a drummer sets the terms in terms of the heartbeat of the event, and also I think for me is the ultimate improviser. I think not only setting the foundation and bones of, you know, the song or, you know, whatever emotion you want to set, with um, you know any sort of uh, tool in the tool belt as a percussionist that you have, but for me the the, the percussionist and drummer is always a north star. I'm curious to know for you what you love most about being a percussionist and a drummer. Yeah, um, I would definitely agree with what you said. Um, I, uh, I guess especially in a rock band, I like being oh, it's a lot of control. Um, obviously, it's like a lot of trust too. Um, I guess that's like that classic Ringo Starr um, Beatles moment where he joined the band and they felt very comfortable. Obviously, um, I find myself as being like a, kind of like a trustworthy person and I, amongst my the kids, amongst my friends and people in the band. So I feel like drums are a natural fit for me in that way. Um, I like the drums a lot too because obviously you can kind of just control the mood. Um, I like it a lot too, I guess, from the sense that I've, I've always been somewhat of an athlete and I like. Um, exercising and the drums uh you can you know you can let out as much energy as you really want playing um so I always, thought, I always thought that was fun and uh I guess I mean I'm still working on this myself and you can really I guess it applies to all instruments but I think it's pretty interesting I guess I don't know what the drums it's a uh 
you can really tell if someone can play the drums versus, you know, if they can, you know, like make the instrument like really speak and talk. I guess uh, the more, and I, I guess that's what I really like about it, especially jazz drummers. I'm not that good, but it's definitely inspiring. And just how you could just, even though everyone's kind of doing similar kind of things, just the way you can accent certain things and the way you can kind of just very small changes in what you're doing could really make the drums talk in different ways. Um, and the more, and I really like that about the instrument because I'm starting to realize more nuances about it, I guess. Well, I think you took the words right out of my mouth. I was about to say nuance because, you know, again, for me, a drummer is kind of like the Monet painter that, you know, dependent on whether they have their brush or their sticks or what, whatever, they're able to set the term and the texture and the color and the shape to kind of give each performance, whether it's the same song you're playing night after night, a new feel. And, you know, as a live uh, performer, I knew when I was performing live, sometimes an, a, a performance is going to also be colored by who you're speaking with, in this case, an audience. And speaking of an audience, you know, you, you've had a few performances already, being somewhat back, I guess, in this still pandemic world. What was that first time back like for you? Um, our first show back was just at the Barry Ballroom in August. Um, it was definitely nerve wracking just because we hadn't played in a while and it was about 600 people. So obviously it's, you know, it was just kind of like you go from it was like going from zero to 100. We played a few different private parties before that, I guess, to warm up, but obviously nothing like playing in a big venue. Um, but I guess going back, I don't know, I had already played there before. So I guess it was just, I had trust in myself and I guess had trust in the band that we had already done it before. So to be able to do it again but i don't know i guess in terms of the energy it was kind of like we wanted to put out a feeling like i don't know everywhere i guess everyone's a little tense about covid and just being like should we be in this big of a room with all these people um you know but it's kind of like you know everyone there they were forcing vaccinations and all those things and you know if you if you wanted to wear a mask you could so we were kind of like we're doing everything we personally feel we could be doing but also need to be playing so let's put on a show that hopefully makes people feel comfortable and can, I guess, let them feel like, um, I don't know, give them like uh, some sort of, I guess, let them play, play some stuff that kind of makes them forget. and Escape. That's yeah. what we do as artists, you know? Right, right. But I guess, yeah, exactly. But I guess it was just a little bit more of like, because, uh, you know, were people nervous to get kind of more closer to each other? Did they feel they want to get some space? And we were kind of under the impression all of our shows prior were kind of like, you know, people are very on top of each other a lot of movement and all those kind of things. It was kind of like, okay, we have to probably go the extra mile here to make sure that um, people can be comfortable like that. Because um, I guess it's just, obviously wanted to be how our shows used to be and we wanted to, uh, um, and we're doing everything we can. So that was kind of, if, if you know what I'm trying to say. No, absolutely. I mean, look, yeah. it, that's what makes you guys in Blonde Otter such an amazing group that you were actually not only out there to get your own music out there, but you actually are genuinely out there, especially in a time like now, which is an unprecedented traumatic time to make people feel comfortable, to make them feel that you can still connect. Yeah, it may not be in as close or as loud or as raucous as a time when you last saw Blonde Otter, but that you're in safe hands with us in that you set those terms. And I think that's beautiful. And I'm curious to know, you know, final question for you, um, Matt, is what you're most looking forward to in terms of moving forward with Blonde Daughter and the shows to come, music to come out? Yeah, um, I guess what I'm looking most forward to would probably be our, whatever our next project ends up being. We just came out with our first album um, and uh, people seem to like it, which is cool. And obviously we were, more, more importantly, it was something that we were proud of. Um, but, you know, definitely interested in how we can, I guess, really get out, go outside the box and really try to create something very fresh and new, um, but also remaining familiar and to, I guess to some degree and, you know, just, I guess, make a product that's very, um, I don't know, just very different, but also, you know, uh, hopefully people can, would, music that people would still want to go and see live. I don't know what it's going to be yet, but. I'd like to imagine something that hasn't been done before, but I can not really describe it more. Um, so yeah, we'll see, I guess. I love it, man. Yeah, and, it. Plenty of, and plenty of shows too, we'll be playing a lot, so. 
Well, listen, I want to let our audience know for more on Blonde Otter and Matt Falcone and the incredible band that you're a part of. I want to let our audience know you can read more about him and them right below this video. Matt, thank you so much for your time today and great to meet you. Yeah, I appreciate your time as well, Will. Thanks a lot. Bye.